Hi everybody, I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about dysphagia. So let's get into it. So first of all, what is it? Dysphagia is defined as difficulty swallowing, so swallowing your food or beverages. And it has many, many potential causes. So what I did was kind of break them up into categories. So starting with neurological causes, these are probably the ones you think of when you think of dysphagia. Things like a stroke, Parkinson's, MS, and dementia. So those are the ones you typically see in our patients, especially in your fundamentals course when you're taking care of those elderly patients. But there are other causes as well. So something could be muscular, uh, a muscular disorder called scleroderma. This is when the throat and the esophagus becomes very like rigid and stiff, okay? So that makes swallowing more difficult. There could be an obstruction, so something in the way, like mouth or throat cancer, a pharyngeal pouch, eosinophilic esophagitis, so this is like a buildup of eosinophils, so those white blood cells, scar tissue, Scar tissue typically related to radiation for throat cancer. And then tuberculosis. And then some other causes that I'm just putting in an other category. Um, increasing age, the older you are, the higher your risk. And having a recent head or neck injury. But in general, the elderly and those with a neurological condition are the highest risk group for getting dysphagia. Aside from the obvious difficulty swallowing, what are some other signs and symptoms the patient might come in with? They might report pain with swallowing, drooling, having a weak voice or hoarseness of the voice, unintentional weight loss, frequent heartburn, or coughing and gagging when swallowing. And the way this is diagnosed, they're gonna to wanna to look at your throat, right? That makes sense. So they'll do an endoscopy, they might do imaging scans to check for an obstruction. They might do something called a swallow study or a swallow evaluation, and that's exactly what it sounds like. They're evaluating your swallowing, seeing how well or if you have any problems with it. Um, and then they might do a test checking the muscles of your throat while you're swallowing and seeing if you're having any difficulty. So basically, they're going to want to look at your throat, right? Because that's where the problem is. When it comes to treatment, it's really going to depend on the severity and the cause. So there's a variety of options here. So they might choose to do surgery, which can include esophageal dilation or putting in a stent. They might recommend certain medications, especially if you're having GERD or heartburn with your dysphagia. They might recommend putting you on a protein pump inhibitor to help with that. Special exercises that can be taught to you by a speech-language therapist. And sometimes they even use Botox to help paralyze the muscles so that can help make swallowing easier. But this is temporary. It only lasts for a couple of months. The big thing, the big treatment is, of course, dietary. So lots of helpful hints for your patients who are having trouble swallowing. Use a straw when drinking liquids. Always sit up to eat, don't slouch and don't eat in bed. Eat slowly. Avoid alcohol, caffeine. No hot foods, especially if you're having pain with swallowing, because remember that's one of the symptoms people might have. So cold or room temperature foods is gonna help with that. Mash or blend your food, thicken your liquids. Chew more, eat slower, smaller pieces. And avoid sticky foods, things like peanut butter, caramel, stuff like that is harder to eat. And then after all of these dietary things, if this is not enough for your patient, a feeding tube would be another potential treatment for them. That way they can get all their nutrients and they can bypass um, their throat. So lots of different treatment options, really depends on what's going on with them. One more thing I wanted to add in regards to complications of dysphagia. A lot of times people who have dysphagia develop this fear of eating because they're gonna choke, they're afraid of choking. 
so they don't want to eat. And this leads to unintentional weight loss, malnutrition, and dehydration. And of course, we don't want things like that to happen to our patients. So using this, right, using these tools, helping them with their diet, hopefully will make eating a lot less scary for them and we can avoid those complications and they can be healthy. So that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.